pleasantry shared. Welcome again to our online session together. This is group 14 for main campus regular students and also our College of Health students. We have a relatively big class size, so we are able to engage more. Your lectures are pre-recorded, uploaded for you. We are expecting that you would have your uh, test book already with you, engaging it so we can now take off. Please, can you see my screen? One of you can just unmute and yes. again. Yes. Excellent. Yes. All right. Just so we are sure, I just finished one class. I can see. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just finished one class, so I want to be sure of each of the screen. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. So this is group 14 and College of Health Science. I suppose. And the topic is, get, get muted immediately. Mute yourself again, quickly. Mute yourself again. Mute yourself again. Quickly, quickly. Officer John, Asawo King. All right. So we can quickly continue. Because I want to share the screen, you do yourself the honor of disconnecting quickly. In other words, blocking your microphone. You know, shut up, bro, shut up. After talking, and then you continue. Okay, that will help all of us. Right, I was asking if you have engaged the topic one a bit more closely, and if you have some questions on it that you want us to share, please go ahead and ask. You ask by raising your hand, I'll find you quickly, then we can engage on, on that. Is there a question? Depending on the gadget you are ho holding, if you want to raise your hand, find the more action step. Okay, so I see one hand up. Manuel, go ahead. Manuel Usu. Yes, Manuel, please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Manuel. Okay, thank you very much. And please, I wanted to add, I saw something in the lecture one, unit one. Yeah. On logical truth into bracket linguistic certainties and empirical yeah. truth into yes. bracket observation based contingencies and I don't understand. So I wanted to I wanted to ask for clarification. Okay, good question. Let me quickly Thanks. try to see if I can throw some light on it. So we we discussed that maybe we just didn't tell ourselves so much that this is what empirical truth is and this is what logical truth is. But you recall the examples that I gave where someone speaks and just by investigating the meanings of terms, depending on which class you were in with me, okay? If I said that the woman wearing suit sitting at the back there is totally naked, I mean, totally naked, yet wearing suit, <laughs> I don't need to observe. I don't need any empirical observation. The meanings of terms, will tell me straight away without any seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, or smelling. That's empirical observation. I don't need a five cents. No matter the evidence you bring to me, I can tell just by the meanings of terms in your statement to me that that, that statement is already false. I don't need to observe. Because if the lady is wearing suit, then she cannot at the same time be totally naked. She may be partly naked or she may be exposing portions of her, but, but to say she's totally naked, totally, the meaning of totally and nakedness and wearing of suit cannot coincide. So this, by the logic of it, by the language of it, I don't need to observe, you see. By the language of it, I can already tell the truth value of that statement. That's a logical truth. It means that it's truth or falsity does not depend on what observation, empirical observation. So when we say it is a logical truth, it doesn't mean it's actually true. It means the truth depends solely on the language, the meanings of terms, the definition. When you do philosophy proper, we call them analytic truths or truth by definition. Okay. Excuse me. Logical truth. However, raining heavily at Tema right now as we speak. It is raining heavily. At Tema, as we speak. That's also a statement of truth I have made. It can be either true or false, but it is a statement of truth. 
How do you establish its truth or falsity? It's actual truth or falsity. You have to observe. You need your five senses to be able to tell. I need evidence, sensual evidence, empirical evidence, observation-based evidence. I'll need that to ascertain the truth or falsity. So for this second statement that it is raining heavily at Tema, I need to either hear it, I need to go there myself to see, or someone who is there calls me and says, it's raining, don't come. Tema is really raining cat and dog, don't come there. Either I had it, I saw it, I tasted it, I smelt it, etc. Those five parts of me, the five senses, that's what the, the philosopher calls empirical knowledge, knowledge that comes by observation. So if you transfer the same thing to our discussion of factual statement, value judgment definition, you will see that empirical truth will fall in the category called what? Factual statement. It can be factually true or factually false. Whilst logical truths are connected to what? Definitions. Definition. So it can be, it can, a statement can be true or false. If the definition is accurate, then it will be a true definition based on what? Analysis of the meanings. If it is wrongly done, if you say a square is a three-sided figure with equal parts, you are trying to define the meaning of square, but you have done it inaccurately because we, by square, we don't mean a three-sided figure. So then we can say that that is a false definition. How do you arrive at that analytically, by what logic, logical? So those two terms there are just capturing the same discussions we had in class. Good question, Emmanuel. Well done. Is there another question? Abna and Pia Baini, go ahead, Abna. Abna, go ahead. You are muted, so you, you may want to unmute and then go ahead. I'm pleased. Uh, when I was reading, I saw normative principles and then empirical generalizations. Which, which unit? You need, yes, I'll, 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 I get you. Normative you principles. One. Unit one. Normative principles yes. and what? Empirical generalizations. Okay, that, that is not wholly unit one. That would have been a, an elaboration that goes beyond unit one, but I can quickly touch on that also. That's more unit two, I think. Maybe you, you thought it was unit one, but don't worry, I can explain it. So empirical generalizations, we will discuss general statements uh, into some detail when we get to unit six. But for now, you can talk of all oh, so-so and so have done so-so and so. If we say women are this, men have done that, planets are so and so. You see, when we speak in the collective, where we are re referencing a whole, we say we are generalizing. So I say, as for guns, they are like this. As for fantasies, they've done this. As for avis, when I'm speaking, I'm generalizing. Uh, when I say uh, politicians do so and so, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now there are ways of grouping, ways of generalizing. Like sometimes you generalize and you play safe. You say most Ghanaians are corrupt. You are speaking about Ghanaians, but you still make exceptions to the whole. We are not speaking about everybody in that set. So you are still plays, uh, playing safe. So you make exceptions to the a kind of generalization we will we'll indulge a bit, a, bit, a bit more. Then we can have the uh, uh, universal ones that doesn't leave anybody out. All oh, so so and so are done so so and so. Those ones are universal generalizations. Now we contrast such general st statements which are scientific in orientation it that means which are empirical you depend on observations to arrive at those okay you see that anytime the clouds gather at the northeastern side of ghana it rains heavily you observe that over and over and over again then you come to that conclusion supposed conclusion that whenever the clouds gather at the northeastern side of Ghana, it rains heavily. This is your claim that whenever it's the clouds gather at the northeastern side of Ghana, it rains heavily. It's based on what? Empirical observation. You've observed and observed and observed. You see that often from what? Your five senses. Either you saw it, you heard it, you read it. So after observing that for a while, then you gather the data and then you draw a conclusion that generalizes for even tomorrow. So you say that even tomorrow too, when we see the clouds gathering at the eastern side of Ghana, it will rain, it will rain heavily. 
This your conclusion, which is a, a generalization, an empirical yes, generalization. Yes, Take note yes, that this is your conclusion that you are drawing is based on just past specific occurrences. You, you observe the specifics, then you, you draw a general statement. So it's based on observation, empirical generalization, a generalization that you arrive at based on what yes, frequent. Yes. Um, yes. I don't worry. Check check your connection. Shift yourself around a bit more. Okay, we are recording, so you will always Thank get the you. feedback. But check check your gadget and then move around a bit. Sometimes reception. Okay. All right. So I'm saying that if it's an empirical generalization, it means you are drawing a conclusion about a whole set. But that conclusion was based on what specific observations that you made in the past. We contrast that with a normative statement. Normative statement is not gathering information from constant observation to arrive at the conclusion. No, that one you are prescribing what should be the case. So all Ghanaians, all Ghanaians must. Guys, what your sound, eh? So that we don't get too many dash. All right, so if you look at the textbook, a normative generalization is not an observation-based general statement. It is a prescription-based, you are prescribing value judgment, how things should be. I see you are prescribing based on the rule. And those are the ones that we will engage a bit more. So it, it's, still, it, it's still trailing from the distinction we make between factual statement, value judgment, and definition. That is what we are building on to arrive at empirical generalizations, normative or theoretical statement, and then factual statement. The same thing is what we'll build on to get to essentially contestable terms versus open class concept. We'll build on that to get to verbal dispute versus substantive disagreement. We'll still build on that to get to deduction and induction. It's, it's the same basis, okay? So just get the difference between factual statements, a statement that is based on observation, using your five senses versus a statement that is based on what your prescription, not something that is out there, the object, but what you think should be the case, value judgment, as we discussed extensively in class. All right, can we have one or two other questions? Quickly, we'll help you clarify, then we can move on to in two. Up to the close of today, you can pick a course reader for my office, here because the ones we picked over the weekend are still with us. But after today, you would have to go to the uh, School of Arts office near JQB, June Scotty Building on main campus. Find the School of Arts office just around the two minutes walk around and go to the general office there and you can get the books there. Okay. Elsie, go ahead with your question. Elsie, your hand was, was up. Are you okay? In all right, so you're okay now. All right, all right. So let's go to our unit two quickly. We are discussing, what is the topic for unit two? Let me see if guys are there. What are we discussing for unit two? <laughs> Please. Definitions, verbal dispute, and substantive disagreement. Very good. Very good. I see Evans and Samuel Otunia post hands up. I also see no better say. Was it to respond to the question or you had your own question? If you have a question, then please go ahead. If not, then we can continue. Norbert Clifford Asante, Samuel Otunia. I see your hands up. Um, I was answering. Not that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Benedicta, okay, you are all sorted. So now we can move on. On our screen now, we see definitions. I tried to give you an inkling of what you should look out for in that and why we even want to do definitions. We think of definitions as having two parts. 
what are the two parts? We mentioned it in class, the definiendum and the definiens. The unknown part of a definition we say is a definiendum, while the known part are the definiens. The two put together is what forms a definition. So those are just the parts of a definition. But I needed to explain something else to you, the way of understanding what definitions. Definitions connote and they denote. When you have a definition, it has a connotation. It has a meaning. It stands for something. That definition is, describes something. And then based on that description, you are able to what? point to the particular thing that the definition points to. So for example, if I say a chair, so this, these are all in your slides already if you have looked at it. A chair is any furniture we sit on. What I have just given you is one connotation of the word chair. A chair is any furniture we sit on. By this connotation, that is by this meaning of a chair, you can particularly point to what you are sitting on right now. I said, okay, if it is, it is, if it's this description, you see. So you can touch what you are sitting on. That's the denotation of chair. If you define chair as what? Well, the furniture that we sit on. Based on the connotation you're giving to a word, you can determine its denotation. So every time you see a definition, you realize that it connotes something. Based on that connotation, we can determine its what? Denotation. Now, I want one of you to read what is on the screen. Understanding the connotation of a word. The connotation, therefore, just means the meaning. One meaning you can give to a word. There may be several meanings for one word. Someone read this for me, please. Quickly keep your hand up. I'll call you. Samuel Otunyako. Samuel, go ahead. Samuel, go ahead, please. If Samuel is busy, let's take Evans. Evans, go ahead. You are all muted. So when I ask you to go ahead, unmute and then speak. Yeah, Evans, go ahead. Chair is the furniture we sit on. Thank you very much. Chair is the, chair the second one. Yeah. Chair is the person who steers the affairs of a meeting. Great. No. So we would see, just a minute. So we'll see that Evans read three. Meanings that we can associate with the word word chair. In other words, the word chair can have these three different connotations that we have captured on the screen. Connote who? What? A furniture that we sit on. Chair could also connote the head of an institution. And chair could be the person who steers the affairs of the meeting. These are all different ways of understanding the meaning of a chair. So when you see the word chair being used, we, we don't immediately think that when I see the word chair, it means that which we sit on. Because if I say the chair of the Council of State of Ghana is coming, I don't mean the thing we sit on at the Council of State is coming. I don't mean that. You see, even though I'm using the word chair, so the connotations of a word may vary. The word chair could connote different things. It could stand for different things. It could mean different things. That's the connotation of a word. I hope you understand that. Now, based on the specific connotation given to a word for a contest, you are able to determine the specific denotations of that word. So everyone finish the note for me, please. Note, note, the given connotation then determines the specific notation. Particular instances or examples referred to in this sentence above. Very good. If I give me so, so we can tell immediately that you can tell that if we were asked to give the denotations of the word chair as the furniture we sit on, then we can point to the black chair I'm sitting on now. Can point to the stuffed chair in your hall. Someone can point to the dressing mirror chair. Someone can point to the dining hall chair at the halls, etc., etc. These particular denotations will suffice. Will, will stand for 
the word chair, if we were defining chair as a furniture receptor. Now, if I said chair, if I change the connotation, like Evans beautifully read for us, if I change what I mean, what I connote, what I am referring to with, with the meaning chair, and I say, oh, I don't mean chair as the furniture we sit on, I mean chair as the head of an institution. And I say, give me instances of chair. If by chair, I mean what? The head of the institution. Then we may call the EC chair, electoral commission chair. You see, the chair of electoral commission is not the, the, the thing we sit on at electoral commission, no. So now the, the, the connotation has changed. So the denotation for chair, if defined as the head of the institution, will now become uh, our current EC chair. Uh, unfortunately, Jen Mensah, right? I'll mention her name. I mentioned another person, all those who chair or head institutions, because here I don't mean chair as a furniture visit. It is important that you understand this so you can interpret and detect equivocation, ambiguity, and different wrong uses of language. Okay, because one word could mean different things based on the meanings, it could refer to different things. That's the point we are making. Very good, Evans. Thank you very much. I take note of class participation, like I told you during our interactive session in person. Uh, I need someone else to read this, please. Pause and think. Can you keep your hand up if you want to read? So thank you very much, Evans. You can drop your hand now. Let's take Hannah. Then the next time we'll take IEV Foster. So Hannah, go ahead. Hannah, go ahead, you are muted. If Hannah is busy, let's take Aivi Foster. Yes, let's go ahead, Foster. Read what the legislature yeah. agreed. The legislature pause and think. The legislature agreed to table the motion for another day. The rows and columns, the rows and columns in the table are too complex. Your breakfast is already on the table. Thank you very much, uh, Foster. Now let's let's look at what is happening there. I want I want comments from the class on what you see happening over there. Look at what can you say about what you see on the screen? Uh, let's take Dockers. Wow, this is a very active class. I see twenty three hands already. <laughs> twenty five. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Dockers. Tell me. Tell me what, what comments you can make about the examples on the screen. Okay, if Dokas, Dokas is not able to speak now, Nana Kwame Ufori. Go ahead, Nana Kwame Ufori. I'm thinking, yes, yeah, so um, what I see is that there are different connotations to the word table. So Excellent. in the first place, we talk about- Go ahead, yeah. The table is the most so like adjoining it. Then the second is um like a table um like um, rows and columns with regards to like diagrammatic. Excellent, excellent diagrams. Yeah. Then the third one. So the third one is your table, like the furniture table. Good. Very good. Thank you very much. So we'll see that as the as the connotation of the word shift, what we specifically referred to the denotation would also change. And that is the point. So don't say I've seen table and the person said table. So he meant that you are telling me to go and change the table. Me am I a carpenter? And then you are talking on and on. And on. Meanwhile, the person is speaking to you and you are you have another connotation in mind. You may not see the import of this now until you are the law court. And someone is using the word law and it's just playing different connotations of the word law and is using that to argue and, and making his case look very potent. You have to raise your hand and say objection, my lord. My, my colleague is equivocating. He, he's just mixing everything because law as the, the pronouncement of God's, God's word is not the same as law as a social you know, convention. It's not the same as law as a moral code. It's not the same as law as a constitutional issue. It's not the same as law as a criminal matter. It's not the same as 
you know, law as a, a, a cultural or customary law. That is unit five. <laughs> you know, unit five, topic one. So it gives you instances where you can see people misunderstanding or misapplying, that's better, misapplying the different connotations of one word in the same context without signaling the hearer, the audience. So you say, I mean, they, these people are breaking the law of God. This country is against such behavior. Just these two things I said is equivocating. The law of God is not the same as what, what some uh, the, the, the nation considers to be right or wrong. And it's not the same as what is a civil matter. And it's not the same as what is what a criminal matter. Maybe they are all laws. I mean, if you wore red dress, gone, Legon campus, where we are, and you went to walk past a band house, they will whistle at you. I think recently it's not as intense as it would have been in the past. You are breaking the law on campus. <laughs> You know, a certain kind of law. They will whistle at you, coco, 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 and confuse your steps if you're a sister. Climbing up the hill in red. You see that? So you we would say you'll be breaking a certain law, but no one will arrest you for wearing red and take you to court or take you to the police station. Certain sense of the word law, a certain connotation of the word law would have been broken, but not another. I tell my students all the time, a sister may decide to wear swimming suit to the lecture hall in person. I'm talking about something that is actually a swimsuit, not something pretending to be swimsuit. Swimming costume. Sister is wearing it, crack, 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 and enter the lecture hall when the class is full of about 1,000 students attending. And she come in at 10 minutes late and be shaking her something, crack, crack, come and sit down. What can you do? She's breaking a certain sense of law, but you won't still arrest her because that one is not a criminal issue. It might not even be a civil matter. It might just be our moral sensibilities that she's hurting. So this is a lecture hall, okay? Just like someone who would take a uh, kaba and slit African wear to go and play tennis, wearing gloves, goggles, socks, shoe camp, wall covered. In kaba and slit, you are going to play volleyball or tennis in kaba and slit because you are holy. That's funny. You will hurt a certain sense of the word law but not the one that will make us arrest you. So there is the law against society, social norms, customary ones and places will tell you this period we don't play, that we don't make noise at this time. That may not be a statutory law, state law, you see that it may not be a constitutional matter. It may not be a, a, what, a criminal issue, it may not be treason. It may not even be a human right matter, may. So these are different connotations of the word law. And that is why, as a critical thinker, you must, you must note immediately when the speaker, check the screen now, those who may be sleeping or lying down somewhere. I've changed my slide now, look on the screen. As soon as the speaker, whoever is speaking, shifts from one meaning of the word, one connotation, okay, of the word to another, pretending as if the two are the same. You see, so he's not signaling you. He has changed chair as a table to mean what chair as the head of an institution. And he's pretending as if nothing has happened. It's normal. Without any signal to you, you have to point it out. And you don't also want to commit that. Okay, so on the screen now, I will need someone else to read. I'm showing you one serious crime that a critical thinker cannot overlook and cannot commit. You cannot be equivocal, you cannot commit equivocation. Someone read that for me. I see hands up. Let me call. So I will take Asum. Asum, go ahead. Asum Isaiah, I think. Yeah. Go ahead. Please read what you see on the screen. I'll explain it. Quick, 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 quick. Is Asum with us? If Asum is busy, let's take Chris. Chris, go ahead. He said, if more than one connotation of the word is used word. in the same context without any signal on the shift, with the intention to manipulate or to persuade, the speaker is accused of committing equivocation. Very good. 
Now take note of the crime that we call equivocation. It's not something to be pleased about. It's not something that you should enjoy when we label you as, you are too equivocal, or what you said is equivocal. It's not something you should be happy about. When I say what you said is valid, you are reasoning, you know, in a sound way, then you can be pleased. When I say you are committing a fallacy, or this is vague, or can you clarify the ambiguity? These are not terms you should be happy about. Okay, so let's 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 explain it. What do we call equivocation? It is a crime, but we want to know the nature of that crime in the use of language. Then we can now avoid it. And more so, we can also prevent ourselves from committing that same crime. What is it? I'll say it again, your friend read it nicely. When you use more than one of the connotations, now you know connotation of a word, in the same context, as if they meant the same. And you don't signal the shift. Shift means you have moved from one of the meanings and you are using the other meaning of that same word. The word is the same, but the meanings associated with that word vary. Remember our table example and the chair example. So you have moved from, say, the meaning of chair as what? The furniture we sit on to the meaning of chair as the head of an institution. But you are using those two different meanings as if they all mean the same thing. Because you are using the word chair and empty. You think that if I say chair and it means the furniture we sit on, the next minute when I use chair and it means uh, the table we sit on, we should take the two meanings as still the same. So you are doing that without signaling or telling us that I don't mean chair as the head of an institution now. Now I mean chair as this. You are not telling us that. And you are not just doing that, but the intention is to manipulate. Take note or to persuade. That's why I use the law court to help you. Homosexuality is this and that and that, and we have a challenge, so we are arguing. But give us reasons why. Then you say that but it's against the law of God. But we are not a church, because some don't even believe in God. So if we want to make a very potent case and we are the law court talking the legality of it, we want to strengthen our argument by avoiding equivocation, you see? so. Someone can point it out immediately that, well, the law of God, well, which God are you referring to now? Because I don't believe in God. Then you flaw you. Because if you move from the law of God to the society we live in, as you have moved from one connotation of the word law, and you are in another connotation of it. This is very important to me. So you see, I'm, I'm using a lot of time to help you see equivocation. It weakens your argument. It strengthens the confusion in a debate if people are moving from different meanings of the word without signaling, with the intention to manipulate or to persuade the speaker, uh, excuse me, the audience. You will meet this again in a 10 when we do fallacies. It's one of the fallacies associated with language, together with secularity and uh, uh, attacking and, and, the, and the cohort, okay? All right, so please finish and let's see one example on the screen, who was reading? Okay. Uh, yes, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, I don't see why women are always complaining that they do not enjoy the same freedom as men do. It is a free country. So what's the problem? Everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. Thank you. Excellently read. Now let's let's examine, let's critique. We are the critical thinkers now. Yeah, being young, right? <laughs> We are improving ourselves to be better at what we are. So let's interrogate. What is what is wrong with this person speaking? Today is uh, International Women's Day. Hi there, women, my, my women ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Happy International Women's Day. All right, thank you very much. We are all muted. Now let's let's interrogate what is on the screen. You know, there, are, there are a lot of our fine gentlemen, you know, who are very passionate about uh, women and rights and what have you. And then there are also some women who are their own enemies and all that. So this is not a gender. Uh, you know, battle, but it is still okay to celebrate the woman today internationally. Now let's look at the, 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 the 
statement on the screen. And I want to read it again. We know our friend read it nice. This person says, I don't see why women are always complaining that they do not enjoy the same freedom as men do. I've given you a clue there about the, the, the word that we are contending over, that the person is being equivocal about, okay? The person goes on, it is a free country. So what's the problem? Everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. Look at that. <laughs> so let's interrogate. Can you see the different connotations of the word free that is being used here? Three different meanings. They don't overlap. They are different ways of using the word free. And I always use this in the recent past because of our free SHS, which we all love and cherish. The policy itself is good. We know there are challenges here, here and there. But think about it. When we say it is a free country. Doesn't mean, I mean, doesn't mean it's a free country. I mean, free is a free. <laughs> free or free. And, and then you cannot get up and, and come and slap me right now. If it's a free country, get up. Uh -huh. Get up and enter your neighbor's room and go and eat the food that she has on her, her, on her table. I mean, if it's a free country, as in free, as in free. Then why are some people in prison? In the same country, that is a free country, and everybody can do what they like. I'm referring to what the person said on the screen. Everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. Really? You know what you mean by that? How free are this sense of free? That, oh, it's a free country. Ghana is a free country. Is, does it mean that it's a free country as in free so much so that people can do what they like? And you still don't have a, why is it that when the exam start, start work at the exam, or you don't get up and go and look at someone's work? And, and look for the answers and come and write it and get up and go. <laughs> it's not a free country. So free here as a, a country where we let right, we allow people to express the, themselves and what have you. Doesn't mean that it is a free country as in free where people do what they like. And it is not the same as saying that women enjoy the same freedom as men do. They don't. Naturally, even naturally, they don't. Just like men don't also enjoy the freedom that some, some of the freedoms that women have. So this person is confusing to me. I mean, when two people enter the room, a brother and a sister, duly married, and since I'm teaching an adult class, allow me to teach. <laughs> they get busy at night. Then the man impregnates the woman. Husband and wife, they are happy. Who carries the, the child nine months in the time? When the brother still walks around, tell everybody I'm a virgin. Can the sister say the same? <laughs> okay, the sister cannot say that. She's not free to decide that. I mean, if some ladies had a choice, they would not choose to have to do that thing at the, that time of the month all the time. It's some stressful something. When you've all studied, you are ready to go and write up your exam. Then Auntie Red decides to come at that time. And your whole emotions are jumbled up. When they ask you square root of 17, eh, 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 whatever, that square root of 25, you say 17. Because your emotions are entangled. And you don't choose that. That is how you are made. Friends, it, can you say that women enjoy the same freedoms as men? Or men enjoy the same freedom? Do you know the same freedom? So the person speaking is confusing freedom, as in we are all naturally human beings that have our rights. See, we are all naturally free. You are, that is, you are stating what is true, but you, you forget to realize that that kind of freedom naturally is also not the same for everyone. Then you now say, because we are of the same free, and it is a free country, so we can freely do what we look at how the person is just equivocating on different meanings of being free. Free SHS. It's free SHS. We like it. But is it free as in free or is free as in free? <laughs> Over to you. Don't, don't answer. Just keep it. Won't the person take care before they get to where they are going to? So you see, when we don't clarify, we will be equivocating. And that simply means you are using the different connotations of one word in the same context without signaling to the audience that you have shifted from one meaning to the other. And normally the intention is to manipulate. If you, you intend to use that to convince people to persuade them, then we see you are committing equity. Excellent. 
get another reader to read what is on the screen. Take note of the emphasis I'm laying, okay? It will help you. You need two. They are doing definitions. Color. Go ahead. Hello, go ahead, please. Example two. I don't. Oh, you are muted. Uh -huh. Go ahead, mm -hmm. wait. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead, my dear. You don't. No, no, no. Please, be patient with everyone. Uh, eh? Our networks are not the same. Let's read or him. Kala, please read. I don't okay, see okay. how you can say you are an ethical person. Good. It's so hard to get you to do anything. Your work ethic is so bad. Excellent. Now let's interrogate this. This one, I'll let someone do it. Can you see the different uses of the word ethical or ethic? The first one talks about ethical as in what? While the second one is talking about ethic or ethical as in what? So we see why we, we, we criticize this as a communication. Someone answer that for a mark. <laughs> I, did. I want trouble for myself. Everybody will get the mark, don't worry. Esther, Esther Gabo, you want to react to that? The hands are many, so I, I keep no. picking as I'm late. Go ahead, Esther. Of course, the hands are many. Hmm? Don't worry, oh. keep them up. <laughs> Esther, do you want to react to the equivocation we, we detect in example two? <laughs> Esther. Okay, let me take Prisla Odro Quarting, I think. I want a reaction. Okay, Deborah. De Deborah, your microphone is unmuted. Maybe you can speak. Deborah Sokoli, I think. Our oh, Prisla is able to speak now. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't see how you can see you are an ethical person. It's like the person is going to say that she she portrays herself to be somebody from how you like. Very good. Continue. Continue. She portrays herself like someone who is what? Somebody of high esteem. Very good. That has good values, so to speak. So this yes. is a question of moral judgment, ethical person. Uh, yes. and, but, but what about the second use of the your work ethic is so bad? Your work ethic is so bad can also be um, the person's how the person has done things in terms of um, a job or occupation. Or how the person carries themselves at the workplace. Not necessarily a question yes. of morality. You see that? So the use of ethical at the top there, or ethic at the top there, the second ethic. You may think that because the word is ethic, we are talking about the same thing. Not necessarily. One is a moral issue. We are raising, we are making a case of morality. So we say, Sister, we will cry on this only day. But this sister carries herself as if she's so righteous. Yet, if I look at how she carries herself at the office, so one is moral, the other one is duty bound. So it may not even be moral, but that is what we do here. Okay, maybe that doesn't come out very well. Let's look at the third one so that we make it better as we improve. So, a third person, thank you very much, my dear. A third person can read example three. Let me take Janice. Janice, go ahead. Janice, just read what is on the screen for me. Quick, 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 quick. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Example three. Yes. I don't mind, I can read, I can read. The, the, the. Janice is reading. Let Janice read. <laughs> Janice, read, sure. read. Janice. Yes, 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 madam. Sure, mm -hmm. philosophy helps you agree better. But do we really need agree. to encourage people to argue? There is See that point. Excellent. 
There is enough hostility in the world. Hostility in this world. You see that? Now, the, the word we feel someone is equivocating on is what? The word argue. Can we all see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, when we say someone is arguing in philosophy, we mean the person is presenting evidence to support the claim he or she is making. That is what it means to argue. So we say philosophy helps you to present good arguments to support your claim. But do we really need to encourage people to argue? So this person's use of argue is what? Exchange of words. Yes. Where people almost want to fight and break their jaws. <laughs> That's what this second use of argue means. But if a philosopher or a critical thinker tells you that this guy really argues, get him on your panel for this discussion. You really have a seasoned because he, he knows how to argue. It is a positive attribute. It means that you are saying that the person will come to your panel with fact and support every claim he or she makes. But the second use of argue on your screen, which a lady read, is telling you that we should not encourage people to argue. So he, this person means argument as what? Exchange of words, dispute, the one that you, you and I in everyday balance, eh? are, are, are more, uh, you know, accustomed to when we hear argue, so you're with your argument, ah, ma. this guy likes arguing, ah, ma. it is not supposed to be a positive quality. So you see, this, they are using one word, argue, but the different meanings associated with that one word can cause a battle of language. When we get to substantive disagreement, you will see, it can create a disagreement that people can even do. Ah. But if I'm arguing, you should be happy with me. You have a woman like me who can make strong cases to support what I'm saying so that we can get a good deal for a business transaction. And you are you are here telling me I like arguing. And the, and the gentleman is also telling the lady, but you are a lady, you shouldn't be arguing like that. You like argument too much. So the two people are disputing in the room there about what they both think the word argue means, <laughs> friends. A whole nation, two nations can be fighting because of equivocation. Equivocation. That is how serious such discussions that we are having are. All right. If you got those, then we can now move on a step ahead to the next aspect of our discussion on definitions. We know the parts of a definition, the definition and the definitions. We know the aspects of a definition, how you can think of a definition, what it connotes and what it denotes. We now want to look at quickly, and this one I'll run you through them. The rest you should read from the textbook. Please study for your own sakes, okay? The types of definitions. So a definition just means what? Giving meaning to an unknown word. If I'm defining, it means I'm showing you how to use a certain word that you didn't know. So you don't know something, and I'm helping you know it by, by using what, what you know to help you understand what you don't know. That's what the definition simply is. Okay, what you don't know is a definition. I've said that already. What you know is a definition. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stick. It means you don't know pollination. And I'm telling you, if you don't know pollination, it just refers to what you know. What you know is that what? When, when pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of a flower, then what you have there is pollination. So the unknown word is pollination. The known part is the what? Uh, excuse me, the unknown word pollination is the definition. Then the known part, which is the definition, helps you understand the unknown word. Now on the screen, now we are looking at types of what? Definitions. It means the ways we use to give meaning to an unknown word. Simplicity. That's what it means. When I say types of definition, I'm showing you the various ways of what? Giving meaning to an unknown word. So you can use the, the lexicon, the dictionary, to give meaning to an unknown word. That's the lexical definition, the first one you see on the screen. If you don't understand a certain word, I can tell you, look it up in the dictionary. And that means I'm showing you how you can know that word that you don't know. The second one is 
ostensive definition. I shouldn't be telling you this, but I want to walk you through to the last type, which is the one you need elaboration on. On the slides that we're giving to you, this one, and we are discussing it as well. See, so that is English. You should just read and pass. <laughs> but the ones that are technical are the ones we help you understand. Okay. So ostensive definition, you point to to demonstrate. You point to or you do it to show the meaning. So if your expatriate friend asks you, what is pan logo? Pan logo, pan logo, what is pan logo? You know, you, you can do the dance to show your friend that that is pan logo. You say, oh, pan logo is this dance. Then you, you, you demonstrate it. To show. That's an ostensive definition. You are demonstrating. Or you can point to some people dancing over there to show your friend that that one, that, that dance, this one is a pan logo. Then you are pointing to it. Maybe there are two different dance ensembles going on. One is Bobobo and the other one is Kualu and the other is Adua. You can use your fingers, point at it to show your friend that that is Kualu. And it is still a definition. Why? You are giving the meaning of that unknown word. How? By demonstrating it or by pointing to it. Then we have the operational definition. I'm going to give you an assignment on this, but I want you to settle in a little bit more. You may want to know why perhaps we struggled a little to give meaning to COVID-19 protocols to some people, okay? Perhaps we were not going about it, right? Or it took us a while to use accessible methods to impact that. Perhaps you would want to know why that little boy or little girl will not brush their teeth. Because all that is being said is, you have to make sure that the cavity and this and this, no one is demonstrating or no one is operationalizing it, giving the steps to follow. I'm on the third point now, types of definition. You can give meaning by doing it. That's the second one, ostensive demonstration, okay? Or by giving the steps to follow to arrive at that. Or sometimes you do the two concurrently. So you are demonstrate, you want to teach someone how to drive, for example. You may want to sit by the steering wheel, turn the ignition, tell the person next to you, you are the master you are teaching. This is when you sit in turn the ignition, okay? So I'm saying it, giving the instructions and I'm doing it and it gives a better understanding than when you sit in your armchair and you are telling you, oh, now you're driving, then you're doing, now you're oh, turning the ignition. And you are sitting at the hall. So my driving is not difficult. All you have to do is turn the ignition and, and step on the accelerator and move slowly. And, then, and what you are seeing, accelerator and the ignition, and all this thing you are seeing, it's not meaningful to the person. Okay, so that is the third way of giving meaning, operational. What should you keep in mind? Steps to follow or instructions that will lead you to that unknown word. Then we have stipulative definition, the one I love. I love it so much. You know, be member, you know, go understand them. Simple. If you are, uh, excuse me to say, uh, an elderly folk, um, good coast person. Hello, hello. Yes. Hello, madam. Yes, please. Yes. Madam, I hope I'm, I hope so, um the, this lecture will be recorded. You know, uh, of course. <laughs> Would you join us late? Have you ever read it? It is already on record. Okay. So fo follow the discussion. Now I'm saying that. So so if you go to, if you were a good coast person, and you you join some WhatsApp platform, people said so or they, they, they write IKR, you know, you could sit on the platform till tomorrow, you understand. You have to be a WhatsApp person to understand. I know, right? And even what it means, the, the emojis and what have you, because it, it is for members only. People are not going by the, the actual meaning of that word out there. So on campus, we have charge. When uh, uh, our, our gentlemen say they are going to charge, and you are a campus person, you go on campus person, you have to find some place and hide your body. Don't go and look for charger and ask, is it iPhone or, or it, is it brush? When they say they are going to charge, don't go for charger. They are speaking a stipulative language. It means it's demonstration. You have to find your place. Those times, I don't know if you still use that. We used to say Infojo. Infojo it was the name of one of our, I think our esteemed VC system. But it was, that term was used during exam. So when we say, if you don't study, Infojo will catch you. It's a stipulative language. We are not referring to the, the actual meaning in everyday use of the word. See, we are not talking about the, lecture, the 
the VC then, or the, I think it was a provision, I forgot, I can, I can find it, then it was referencing something. If I say home cho, a secondary school person, I understand that, and so on. So I could come to class friends and tell the class rep, uh, Nana and, and the able princess, and tell them that, look, when I come to class and I ask for water, I mean, uh, uh, what? Akwateshi, gin. <laughs> so I tell princess, I maybe tell the princess and not tell Nana. Okay, then we'll be teaching. So you are in class, you know water. The students in the class know what water is because there's a lexical definition for water. The general use it. Eh, who is laughing? There's a general use for the word water. But between myself and princess, or between myself and Nana, your classroom, I could tell them when I say water. So you all think that Nana has gone to bring me water. When I say, get me my water. And I'll be teaching and I'll be drinking. And everybody knows uh, the lecturer is drinking water. Before you know it, I'm drunk. You won't know because, because the meaning I used the, the meaning I used there wasn't the meaning that is used lexically. It was what stipulated. That's all I'm trying to show you, so you don't forget. By fiat, agreed upon by users. Think of jargons. It will help you. It's not institutionalized. You see that. It may be generally accepted, but it's not institutional. It's not like a lexical definition. Or the next one right after this one, theoretical definition. Theory-based definitions. Look, water is what? H2O. Two molecules of hydrogen, and I think a molecule of oxygen at room temperature. That's what water is. That's water. So if I'm trying to give you the meaning of water, you don't know what water is. At the lab, at the chemistry lab, I think, I could say, give me two molecules of hydrogen and a molecule of oxygen at room temperature. If you are a chemist or a chemistry student or a science student, let's, let's use it very broad, you, that would be meaningful to you. It is a theory-based definition. You must know a whole theory to understand that H2O or, or NA, uh, what's the other? So what is what? NACL, that I have written on the board. But imagine me cooking in the kitchen, calling uh, the lady helping me at home, house help or something. Yeah, 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 I say, yes, ma, yeah, yeah, yes, ma. Hey, bring me H2O, why? <laughs> hey, bring me H2O. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does it, you see, H2O, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She didn't tell you she wants to be chemist. Oh, you see, so you will be saying H2, and the banco is burning. You need the water to stay. <laughs> and you are standing there looking all technical, mm. and you know, maybe you are a uh, Nobel Prize, whatever winner for science. Oh, yeah, there. But this one, the banco is burning. Because, because a theoretical yes, definition is for what? Those who know the theory. Friends, a person must be an expert, must know the discipline, a whole institution, a whole, if you like, course, before they can even grasp the meaning you are trying to put across. So you want to avoid theoretical definitions when you are addressing uh, untutored, quote and unquote, uh, problems. and what you know in your discipline may not be what I know. So I may be an expert in my discipline, but not in yours. The accounts person, when they say demand, they don't mean, when the accounts person says demand, it doesn't mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean what you think in everyday life. I'm taking my time part to build this uh, grounds for you, friends. When the accounts person says inflation, then you, you won't take your value. Then you are blowing. No, you have to have a whole, this, just like when the philosopher or the critical thinker says what? Argument. It is not what you think. It's a theory-based one. So we can give you the meaning of a term. And that meaning will be what? Theory-based, a theoretical definition. Any questions before we go to the real definition? If you have a question, because the hands are up, if you have a question, kindly unmute and ask. I won't be able to call one person. All right. So we will continue then. Now, what about real definition? 
So we know lexical, ostensive, operational, stipulated. Hello. Yes, please. Go ahead. If it's a I question, go ahead. Yeah. The ostensive and operational. Eh? Okay, ostensive, you point to. So if I ask you what is, uh, what, what does fufu mean? Fufu. You can point to some dishes on the screen and say that one, this one is fufu. You have given me the meaning of fufu. How did you do it? You pointed at it. But operationally, give me the steps that will lead me there. So if you want fufu, if I can say fufu is the food you get. When you buy cassava, you add some plantain or cocoyam, depending on your choice. You cut them, take out all the strings. The strings to say yeah, Take them out. <laughs> cut them into <laughs> chunks that are sizable. Keep on fire. Add some water. Let it boil. Now pound in a pistol or a hey, pound in a pistol. That's a, pound in a mortar with a pistol or use any other means to blend it to a good consistency. The dumpling you get after that is fufu. I've given you how to arrive at the steps. To I don't need to do it. And I forgot about the soup. I Let me continue. Fresh and also. So once in a while we are allowed that so we can relax. Okay, but let's continue. So I was saying that, yes, just a minute. Let me finish with that. I have a question. I'm coming. I'll take all the questions. I was just telling my, my lady friend that the difference is for one, you you point to it or you demonstrate, you do it yourself. That's the, the ostensive one. Okay. Then the other one, the, the operational one, you don't need to do it yourself. You don't need to point to, you just show the steps. So you give the instructions that will lead you there. That's it. But they normally work hand in hand, but they can be distinguished. Okay, I hope that helps. Let's take the second question. Let's do it systematically. So I want to take the lady who says, I have a question. Please ask me. You are many, um, so. Madam, yeah, go ahead. Please, the stipulative, is it like a metaphor? Like Unfortunately, metaphorically. no. Like we are comparing Metaphors. something to what we are trying to see. Yes, stipulative means you create it. I mean, if you come to my home, eh, my, my personal home, we can speak across you, within you, my children, you won't hear anything. Because we have, we have, cupboard is closed. And what I'm asking is, go and check if there is enough food for us this evening. Because we have just welcomed the guests. But what I'll ask totally away from how we interpret that language in everyday use of it, let's look at it. You see that. So stipulative means it is for those who are using that language. They create it for themselves. So they are using a word that is already known out there, which came with its meaning, but they are using it differently from how that word is used. But a metaphor is a comparison. So when I say uh, I, I, I can't tell who you are immediately, so let me use who I can see here. So if I say, Chris is a lion, or Yaya is a flower. That's a metaphorical statement. I'm telling you something <laughs> about Yaya. 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 That's the hair. Wow. I want I want you to see something about Yaya, but I am doing that by comparing the being called Yaya with something, so that by that comparison you can have your own interpretation. But realize that if I say Yaya is a flower, look at the various meanings we can give to that. It could mean what? You can unmute and speak, anyone. I mean, if I say Yaya is a flower, it could mean what? It could mean she's beautiful. She's beautiful. No worries. Everybody is good now. It could mean she's beautiful. It could mean she's weak. It could mean she's fragile, and so on and so forth. If I say Chris is a lion, it could mean she's some. You can even say Chris is and and uh, Chris is a Mugabe. Apologies, eh? or, or and all those. They are supposed to to help you 
relate something about that word to prints. But you have to be cautious when you are interpreting metaphors. And we'll get there, we'll get there when we do unit three. When I say, yeah, yeah, I, I, if yeah, 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 forgive me, eh? but I want examples that are homey, can easily connect to it. When I say, yeah, yeah, it's a pig. Look at the many meanings it can have. Yeah, yeah, likes pink stuff. Exactly, she likes food. Oh. Perhaps she's put on a little. She's dirty. She's dirty, excellent. Yeah, yeah, it's a dirty girl. Thank you very much. So look at all yeah, these. Yeah, 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 when the, the, the person comes to see the doctor and says, hey, my wife is a pig now. The doctor should not pick a phone and call the wife and say, hey, your husband, he doesn't respect you, sincerely. When he came to see, I'm even shocked. How, how could he say that about you? <laughs> you shouldn't be gossiping. Let the gentleman open up what he meant. Because maybe she was not even eating and she was growing lean, which is not good for her pregnancy. Then after yeah. some prescription, yeah. she's not able to eat and she's eating everything that is passing by. Coach, yeah, then she's there, hey, bring it, I'll eat, bring it. Go and pour it away, no, I'm here. That kind of thing. So he's happy. Maybe he's happy. And he's telling you now she's a pig. She's eating everything. As soon as you hear she's a pig, you have, you have taken from the nurse who lives as a neighbor, passing by her, she has gone home. Her husband has expect. You have to look at him. It was a metaphorical statement. Okay. So that one comes with different meanings that is why we want you to treat it as distinct from literal use of language okay so stipulative definition they are trying to give a meaning to the, a word i don't understand it and you want me to understand but you use a language that you and i share to give me meaning that's different from when you are using language metaphorical i think there was a last hand let's take that and then we'll continue quickly yeah. yes please go ahead I want to ask if there's a difference between the logical and the theoretical. Uh, there's a difference between which one and which one, please. I had the theoretical, the theoretical. but the first one. The logical. Le logical. Yes, please. Yes, please. There will always be. That's why I want you to engage the content in your test. Read it, but you, you have okay. so much on it. The lexical definition gathers what is the general, uh, the generally accepted use of that word that's why some dictionaries are higher i mean we, we value them than others like if it's Mer merriam webster's or oxford or you see we, we say this is oxford why because we are we assume that some are able to gather the the use of that language and get at the various ways you use that language generally speaking than others so based on the lexicon that you have, the dictionary that you have, you can have an updated version or an old one. It is only gathering what is generally acceptable. Theoretical is talking about institution. So a scientific uh, dictionary or an econ's dictionary or a French dictionary may authenticate something that is not even the, in the lexical one. Okay. And vice versa, okay. Uh -huh. There will always be overlaps as well. So that is how you should, you should see if I, I got the meaning from a lexicon, which is a general use of a, a, a word, a dictionary. It will not okay, be okay. necessarily be the same as uh -huh, the one that is in the technical document, a theory-based one. Okay. All right, let's go to the real. Thank you very much. Let's take real definitions now. Look at the various names we can give to real definitions. Real definitions are also for ideal definitions, eliminative definition, essential definition. What, what, when is a, a definition a real one? If, if you look at the various ways we, we describe the real definition, it should tell you that they are not common definition. You can't find them often. Okay, an ideal man, sisters, those who are looking for an ideal guy before they enter a relationship and marry, you will look for long because they are not. <laughs> Enoch, you find Enoch set, those people, 
Ideal, ideal, ideal. Ideal, ideal. Yes, 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 Eliminating. You can take, if you remember substitution by elimination, you know, you can take out the definiendum, replace it with the definition. The meaning will not change wherever you use that word. That's another way of detecting if a, a definition is real or not. If you got that one, then you realize that the definition a bachelor is an unmarried adult means it's not a real definition. A bachelor is an unmarried adult. It's not a real definition because I could use that word, a bachelor, and it will not mean an unmarried adult in certain contexts. Like if you say you are earning a bachelor's degree, for example, you see, it doesn't mean you are looking for an unmarried man's degree. <laughs> I'm sure you get the point. So sometimes we use the word bachelor, it doesn't mean an unmarried adult. Therefore, if I define bachelor as an unmarried adult, you can say that it is a real definition. It has a weakness. It doesn't do what definitions really do. That is why we don't call that one a real definition. You can't replace the definendum with the definitions wherever you use it, like you would have done for an expression like two plus three is equal to five. Wherever I see five, I can put in two plus three. And wherever I see two plus three, I could put in five. And the meaning won't change, friends, because what I mean by five is the same as what I mean by two plus three, which is the same as the square root of 25, and so on and so forth. So you will realize that real definitions are not common. Where do we find them? We find them mostly in mathematical and deductive studies like logic. I already said math, eh? math, and some aspects of physics. All these things I'm telling you already your test. You see it also in the slides, and I'm repeating it so that you remember that a real definition, a definition that is doing what definition should really do, will not have the floor where you can't replace the definition with the definition. If it's a real definition, definition must be able to replace the definitions everywhere, everywhere, not sometimes, everywhere you use that definition, it must mean the definition and vice versa. So that's one clue. That's why we say it's eliminated. Okay. Then we also say it is essential. Essential. It means the definition captures what the definition is. In essence, essential is a, a, a philosophical word, eh? essence, what the thing really is, it's actual, it's actuality, not something that describes an aspect of it, but what it stands for. It is an ideal one, and it really captures all its aspects. Now, if a definition is a real one, then we describe it as what? Well-defined. Why? Because it helps you identify all the particular denotations captured in its extension. That sounds technical a little. Look at the definition. An even number is any number that divides two equal without a remainder. What you know already in, in maths, what an even number is. Based on this definition, you can list all the particular denotations that are referred to by this definition, all of them, without any ambiguity. You start from two, and the next one will be four, and you go to six, and you can continue ad infinitum because the definition doesn't allow for ambiguity. The word is defined in a way that you can clearly determine all of its what particular denotations. And you can do it without any ambiguity. But as for the word bachelor, when we start, we'll be counting human beings, men. Before long, degrees will come in because a bachelor is a degree and in the university. Papers will join, certificate. Before long, that same queue, buttons will join. Because there are bachelor's buttons. Flowers will join. There are bachelor's flowers. So it is the word bachelor 
doesn't straightforwardly eh, have a clearly defined meaning. That is real. The meanings you have are not real because they are not eliminated. It, it doesn't clearly show you the extension without ambiguity. It will show you the extension, but it's ambiguous. You'll be counting human beings before you open your eyes. Buttons have joined the queue. And you can't sack them because they're also bachelors. And before you open your eyes, flowers have joined. And so on and so forth. Okay? So if a definition is a real one, we will say it is well defined. Can you read what we see on the screen? Somebody, so I take, I take um, Bridget, completely clear which objects or individuals or properties are correctly called by that word. Excellent. This meaning Continue. is not contestable in the discipline in question. Very good. Continue. Please, continue. Yes, my dear. Continue. Common in deductive studies like math and logic refer to the definition oh, of sorry. even number in the prescribed test. Very good. So I already referenced it, and the pre prescribed test has that definition. You, you cannot contest, you cannot argue. Guys, this is a very contentious uh, mm -hmm. terminology, so I'm helping you understand. And when you read, I believe that things will fall in place for you, okay, with prayer and all. Okay, so I'm saying that if a term is well-defined, in other words, if you have a real definition, that real definition will be described as what? That, that concept whose definition is real will be defined as a well-defined concept. And I'm trying to explain how you distinguish well-definedness from open texturedness, but I'm, I'm going slowly. If a term is well-defined, then it can make completely clear what the particular properties are, okay? Property here means the description of it. it. It clearly identifies its extension with that ambiguity so that you can particularly list every member every particular denotation without ambiguity. Okay, that's well defined. Not a definition that doesn't allow you to pick clearly what it is referencing because of how it is defined. When you read a textbook, it looks very complex how it has been captured. It's nothing big. That's why I'm using easy language for you. Okay. So if a term is a well defined concept, there is no ambiguity about what its denotation is. Why? Because the, the connotation is so clear and there is no contention, you can contest it in the discipline in question. Look at even, even number. Can you say you are doing math and that's for you, even number is a number that divides uh, two with the remainder one. Then it's not much you are doing, you're outside of math. You want to do math, we have a meaning for our terms and that meaning doesn't permit your own opinions. But come to, a social science and social study oriented discipline, humanities, for example. We, everybody has their own definition of democracy, family. For someone, the dog is more a family than the blood brother. You see? When we go to church, you say, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, brethren and sisters. Munyanum, our ex-president of blessed name, would say that, my brothers and sisters. See what this man is, my grandfather. He calls me a brother and a sister because the word brother, sister, family, fidelity, democracy, justice, etc., are not well defined terms. They allow for different interpretations. Let's go to that slide quickly. That's the, what we have on this. They allow for different interpretations. That's the nature of the word. The word itself doesn't have a fixed, closed, Concept. It's not a fixed and a closed concept like well defined terms are. Okay, they allow for open contestation. You argue over it. So, what constitutes justice? 
who is an infidel. One religion, for instance, will say that it's okay to have more than a wife, so far as you can take care of them. If I even have up to five, ooh, that's beautiful. Another says, even if you have a garden, in addition to the farm, there's trouble. <laughs> so you have your legitimate fidelity. Define differently who is right and who is wrong. Remember value judgment and factual statement. I told you that they will migrate the same thinking in different terminology as we are done. Okay. So someone may think of um, uh, uh, what development as what having high rise building in that society. Meanwhile, morally bankrupt. And the person thinks, well, what matters is if we have trains and, and you can go to space and what have you. But it doesn't matter if we don't know the difference between grammar and, I mean, grandma is standing in the bus at the junction who hustle with him or her, push her over and enter. What is developed nation? It's, it's open to contestation, uh, contestation. So on the screen, you see open textured terms which I also called essentially contestable terms. We are still on definitions. Certain terms are open to contest. You can contest what their essence is. Development, fidelity, family, democracy, etc. For some democracy means say some, make I say some. Who we'll fight and talk and exchange with that. That's how some, some define, uh, define what democracy. Who is right and who is in the same discipline. Not outside of it. You can't do that in mass. You can't have your own view of what it means to be an odd number. That's the point we are making. So definitions are either open text chat, in other words, open class concepts, which allows for further and better elaboration viewpoints to improve it. A just society. Why, why are people going to Ukraine to protect or defend them or fight with them against Russia, for example? I'm just asking why. Because some people feel that a notion of justice is being what? Interfered with. But another person also feels it's going to that state because it is just. All right. So that should, should tell you how open textured a concept like justice is. And so it allows for, for further and better deliberation. And the well defined terms, don't, don't let us give ourselves too much credit. Those of us who find ourselves in those disciplines, maths, some aspects of physics, logic, where our terms are closed. It's empty of content. It's just form, 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 structure. It doesn't deal with the actuality, the content. So you will see when we discuss in unit six and seven, you will see why I can say all women are cheats. My father is a woman, therefore he's a cheat. And it will be valid because I'm just looking at the form, the structure, the pattern all in good time. I don't want you to get too confused. But the point is, don't, don't go thinking that this is a superior discipline than the other. Not at all. Logic is beautiful. It's a tool. Mass is beautiful. It's a tool. But what mass and logic prescribe as rules of thumb are just rules. That's what they are. They don't really speak to content. If you study, then you pass. You have studied. Therefore, it follows that you pass. But people study and they don't leave. So that they put to write the exam. So actualities are not just systems and structures and rules, empty rules. So I, I, I'm just saying that as, as a note of caution. That is the methodology. So we are learning how definitions present themselves. When you have certain definitions in certain terms, concepts uh, may be defined and their definitions are contestable because of the nature of the concept itself. Whilst at other times you have terms that are what? Well defined, therefore, their definitions are real. And I've given you some clues telling you that they are not very common. They are like <laughs> ideal guys, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we got this one, we got this one. We can now. I'm sure that everything is sinking in very well. I sent you a, a my, my academic channel link. You can always go there and, and engage the content on the other uh, topics alongside, uh, they are there, they've always been there. It's just that the, the directions are not uh, specifically to you. You may hear me saying group one, group this, group. Oh, that that was for previous, that's for previous years. But the content itself, problems of philosophy, excuse me, problems of definition, we'll move on to the unit three, unit five, et cetera, are there. You can be reading ahead, playing the tape, 
Yes, please. Please, I have a question yes, regarding the operational ahead. definition. Yes, my dear. So go for ahead. the operational <laughs> definition, when you are demonstrating, is the demonstration the definition? Operational definition is not demonstrated, though. It's ostensive that you demonstrate. Yes, so is the demonstration the definition in that case? So if I write, if I write, see the Malogo is the dance that those people standing there are dancing. You see, Malogo is the dance that those people standing there are dancing. Malogo is the definition. The definition is that those people over there are dancing. Mm. Okay, thank That's you that very job. much. Yeah. It's it's clear now. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to point out so that you don't get yourself worked up. My doctorate is on the miles, and I, my doctorate is on my maiden name. So if you look for Dr. James in the investor system, you won't find it, and it will not be me. That's why I I tried, but but I'm married now, and I'm proudly married. So it's bad for James the married name. But my, my doctorate is uh -huh. If you see some readings that are like that, then you don't get confused. Let's continue. So I was oh, yeah. to, uh, <laughs> women. National Women's Day. Why is it that when we marry them, women don't take our names? <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's... Okay, let's let's move on now. So now I can talk about the problems with definitions. And this one will trust we will run very fast. Take your textbooks, let them be close by you who we'll engage some examples in the text. Then the rest, you attend tutorials to get it. We are almost done compiling all the tutorial links also. So your life is easier. You look for a convenient tutorial time and join. If your own group's tutorial time is not convenient, I'll compile all for you, okay, in due course. But when you go for tutorial, you, you practice more. Hello, madam. You practice more. So let's go to the problems with definition. Okay. Hello, madam. Yes, please. Hello. Um, go ahead. Please, go ahead. Tutorials, like, um, I don't understand about the tutorials you're talking about. Don't worry. Go through your course outline. Eh? It's on the course, hey. at, uh, course site at Overview. Oh, go through it. <laughs> there are over 4,000 of you. We oh, don't oh, oh. visit everyone. You see that? But I. Uh, when you go to the course site, hello. When you go to the oh, course site oh, eh? oh, oh. at Overview or Syllabus 2. Go through everything that uh -huh. I have put there for you. It will help you. Okay. Let's continue, please. Oh, uh, After today, oh, if we, if we uh, continue unit two in the third week, you will be trailing on. Me, I want you to understand. I won't write exam. You are writing exam. Okay. I'm in a meeting. Then so we are writing exam. Oh, let's just see. You I'll finish in 20 minutes. And then we okay, are let's continue. Matter. So I'm saying that problems with the finishing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not writing exam. I was in level 100 more than 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, right. If you don't speak, right. you don't worry. I'm just saying you are all very intelligent and handsome and beautiful. <laughs> Let's continue. Where did I get to crowd? Now the problems with the okay. thank, you, thank, meanings, you, thank you very much. When we give meanings to words, sometimes our definition is weak. Sometimes our definitions have problems. You see, that we are we, we want you to be wary of as a student. Okay. So that you you can detect one and you can also what correct one. So let me help you see some of them. Sometimes when you define the challenge we have is your definition. Your definition is too broad, too narrow. It is circular or it is vague. It's like when we diagnose your sickness that you brought to the hospital. If it's a definition of sickness, it could be too broad, too narrow, circular or vague. When do we say a definition is too narrow? When do we say a definition is too narrow? When you say, you say you don't know the meaning of something, then I'm trying to give you the meaning. But the meaning I give you excludes, takes out some legitimate members that should be in that set. We we'll say you have narrowed, you have narrowed the definition, technical. But if you get it, that's all. You won't struggle to revise. We say you have narrowed. The definition. So, for example, if I say a human being is a man, suppose I want to give you, suppose I want to give you the uh, the meaning of human being. Suppose you don't know human being, then I say you want the text. 
Are you here for the third? Then please sit. I'll finish in 20 minutes. If, if you don't understand human being, then I tell you a human being is a man. I'm telling you that if you don't know human being, look at what man. Now that is a narrow definition. And I hope you see why. It's narrow because I have excluded women. So we can conceive of women as part of human beings, yet the definition has excluded them. That's the critique. So we say it is narrow because legitimate members have been left out of that city. Now, on the other hand, if I said a dog is a four-legged animal, stop on muting, eh, friends. I'm trying to think to make your life easier. <laughs> So, so please stop on me and listen. If I say a dog is a four-legged animal, four-legged animal, I'm saying if you don't know a dog, look at a four-legged animal, four-legged animal. Okay. Do you realize what will go wrong? Madam, we can't hear the people. Please say I can't hear. <laughs> Don't Madam. speak for everyone. Don't speak for everyone. Me too, Madam. Me too. Me too. Me too. Okay. Who else me. can't hear? Check your network, move around a bit. Eh? So we if can I hear it. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, you can hear. Few people can hear. You should check their network or your data. Okay. So if I say a dog is a four legged animal, I'm telling you that if you don't know a dog, you got any four legged animal. You go calling goat a dog. You see, you call a cattle a dog, and so on and so forth, because of how I defined dog. So if I say a dog is a four-legged animal, I'm saying if you don't know dog, look at a four-legged animal. That is broad. I've broadened the reference. I've broadened the denotation set. I hope you get that. So broad, narrow, that is it. Look at the unknown word and then relate it with the known one that I'm giving you. And you can tell whether it's broad or narrow. Then circular is where you repeat the definition do mean the definition sometimes literally sometimes not literally but it's still a repetition if i say to be to be famous is to be well known it's secular i said nothing it's just like saying development is developing the nation okay so that's also secularity or begging the question or tautology these are all problems with definition and then we have what vagueness when you have a definition that we say is big, it means we are saying that you haven't specified. Sometimes you are, you are giving us meaning, but you are using language in a figurative manner. You are not being clear, you are being symbolic or what's the other one, a idiomatic expression. In trying to define, you didn't, you are rather being idiomatic. And we say it's it's vague. Take, take one. Yeah, someone should have looked now. Okay, so that's vague. A definition does not specify uh, adequately to determine yes, please, what belongs to the uh, West. Let me sum up quickly. So these are four problems we can have with what a definition. Either it is too broad, too na narrow, secular, or vague. Okay, you can see. Ask your question, sir. Yeah, for uh, your uh, explanation to the broad. Yeah, can we say more than a bag has some um, similarities? Can we say the broad and which one, please? The bag. Big, it's big. No, they don't have similarities. No, they are not similar at all. They are not similar. Oh, bro, bro, bro. Oh. They are not similar. <laughs> if, if a definition is broad, oh, bro. eh, you are very good. Oh, please, eh, who is that? <laughs> Who for no more distance? I'm Casa Vibro. Raya. Let me explain to my friend. Okay. When it is vague, it is less compared to ourselves. Okay. When it is vague, it means you are not even clarifying your use of language. Okay. When it's broad, it's very clear, but you have included members that should not be there. That is what it means to be broad. Okay. When it's broad, it means you have included more than should be there. So if I say a four-legged animal is, excuse me, a four-legged animal is a goat, 
I'm saying if you don't know four-legged animal, look at your goat. That will be what? Narrow. Because I'm pointing to just part of the members to define the whole. Okay. But if I turn it the other way to, then it will be broad. If I say a, a goat is a four-legged animal, that will be broad and so on and so on. That's the point I'm making. Okay, but vague, as for vague, you are not even using language in a clear manner. Like I have said, it often happens when you use uh, symbols, symbolic language. Hey, can you get me one of the UGRC tests? I want you to go to one page and let's do some practice questions there. It can help us so that we end with that. Okay, go to your page, go to the test book, go to page um, diagnosing definitions. Mm -hmm. Too broad, too narrow, circular. Let's go to page. Madam, please question. You have a question? Just a minute. Uh, let's let's see if our. I also have a question. Okay, let me take the first question. Take take the first one. Come to now and then ask. Set. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Who had a question? Yeah, I, ha okay. I have a question. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Madam, please, my question is um, when we're explaining the problem in the nation, the, the line was the next week was not stable. So. Oh, well, it's being recorded for the reception thing there. We'll have it all the time. So don't worry, okay? Uh, I could go over okay. and over again. It will just make your video lengthy. I, I have a very good connection. When I finish, I'll send it okay. to you. Uh, but study the content well, and then engage the slides. Okay. Meanwhile, okay. you can turn to page 44 of your test quickly. Let's finish on that one. We are looking at um, problems with definitions. The first one I see here is the meaning of able is, for example, either. Okay. If I say the meaning of evil is, for example, murder, how will you diagnose that definition? Is it too broad, circular, narrow, or vague? And why? Quickly, please. I have more than 37 hands up now. It is narrow. narrow. Okay, why narrow? Why narrow? Because yeah. you can't say um, evil is murder. Like, evil covers a whole lot of... Excellent. The second things. part of your answer is so good for us because of the way we ask our critical thinking questions. I could ask you in not more than one line. And the time you have for it is five seconds. So I like the second part of your thing. It is narrow because Evo includes more, covers more than just murder. That captures it in a simplified, concise manner. Well done. We are on page 44. So those with the text, you can look at it so you are ahead. Two, to be courageous is to have courage. What problem will you have with that? It's a straightforward one. Chris, it's circular. It's circular. Well done. Circular. Because you are just repeating courage, which is already our definition, right? The next one, yeah. a dinosaur is a prehistorical yeah. creature. It's just broad. Broad. I hope you understand why. Why that yeah. is broad. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying if you don't know a dinosaur, look at a prehistorical creature. That will include a unicorn okay. and a all the other that we have heard of. Yes. So it will be too broad. Sometimes one that could be both could be both broad and narrow, depending on which connotation of the word you are using. Now that you know connotation, remember, okay. One example is this one. Violence is forcing someone to do something against his or the desire. Okay. That that definition should be broad. And it could also be narrow, depending on which connotation of violence you have in mind. You people are forcing me to do something <laughs> against my desire this morning. My desire is not to be sitting behind a laptop, pretending to be teaching, as you pretend to be listening. You are forcing me to do something against my will. But it is not violence. We don't interpret that to be violence. You see that? Uh -huh. So this is one sense of the use of violence that could make us say that that, that that would be a too broad a definition for violence okay yet at other times too you can be very violent and you haven't forced anybody by just speaking gently i'll kill you 
even with a smile. And that is even considered more violent. Meanwhile, you haven't forced anyone to do anything against their will. So in that sense, we would say that it is, this definition has been narrowed. That is why it could be both narrow and broad, depending on the reason you offer as a critical mind to that response, okay? Then how about five? And identity is the sharing of identical but, features. Yes, Auntie. Madam, please, I have a question. Circular. The, the question, question five no, is circular. Yes, yes. Madam. Yeah. Yes. 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 Madam, please. Is it Erica? Erica, or wh yes. whoever it is, ask your question. Yes. There are about 70. Uh, are 39. Madam, please, you, you are talking about... um. A definition being either narrow or broad. I didn't say either or. It can be both. Yeah, narrow, but that's like relating to the violence. It can be both. Yeah. Not either or. Either or yeah. means one and not the other. Okay. You see that? Uh -huh. But it could okay. be both for for different reasons because one word could have more than one connotation. You understand? So, yeah. yeah. So, madam, can that one also be vague because it's not specifying what it's not actually vague. No. to. Okay, it, this one is very clear, except that it points to more than one. Vague is when you use language symbolically. Look at, uh, let me give you an example. Look at 12, example 12. Look at your test. If you don't have the test, I'm sorry. Page 44. I'm sorry. Number 12. So, religion is the opiate of the masses. Religion is the opiate of the masses. You know opiate, the singular opiate. Hey, the plural for opium, I think. Oh, please, madam, I can't hear what you're saying. Testing my tooth. I didn't know you Hello. 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 Opium, eh? Opium is a sedative, something you take in, you see, so you can forget your problem. If someone says religion is the opium of the masses, the person is seemingly defining, seems as if the person is defining. But this is not a definition. The person is being symbolic. I hope you get it. He's, he's being proverbial. So you can't call this as narrow or broad. It is vague. The, the vagueness arises from where? The symbolic use of language. Either you have been metaphorical, uh, what's the other one? Uh, figurative, proverbial, idiomatic. When you use language that way, they are not supposed to be interpreted literally. Okay? That's an example. But violence is forcing someone to do something against his or her will. For her desire. It's not vague. It's very clear. However, it can have more than one diagnosis. Tell you give. Uh -huh. That is what I wanted to point out. So love is an emotional response. Another one. Learning is a form of intellectual stimulation. Dancing is the repetitive motion of the whole body or limbs. All water ladies are snobs. If I say oh, a water lady is a snob, is that a definition? Severely judgment. I'm not even defining at all. I'm judging. Remember the three types of definitions. Okay. So these are the things we will do with you when we try to test whether you understood the content or not. You can apply them. Let's sum up. We have one minute. So I'll sum everything up nicely for you as you prepare to engage the next topic. Okay. The examples I gave you are all on the board. I picked some from the text. If you can look on this, the trial question. Lady, efficiency is being efficient as what you do in this office, please. That's secular. The meaning of evil is murder. That's not. Mm -hmm. A dinosaur is a prehistoric. All of them, we have done that. I picked them directly from the text and placed them there. We'll do in a three, God willing, later, when we meet next week for interactive sessions. Take note, my dear friends, that the the interactive sessions are not a lecture. So if you don't engage the content that we take a lot of energy to put together for you, you don't engage it. You won't look at your test book. You won't go online to our recorded videos. You won't look at the slides that have been uploaded for you. You're just looking for someone to come and sit like this and tell you everything in the content. You may do the course again, unfortunately. You don't want that to happen. So may I caution students all the time. This is a solely, or if you like, mostly online, desktop, largely online. So if you go to your Sakai, you will see that the slides for topic one, topic two, for even some of the groups, all of them have been uploaded already. You go further, you have the recorded lecture proper. 
like what I'm doing now, already recorded for you and uploaded. It's not done anywhere. I mean, this is my intellectual property. I shouldn't do that, see? But it's already uploaded for you. You can do anything with it. If you went to the in-person lecture, will you go and record a lecture and have the, the, the luxury of playing back? You see that? For the longest. To, uh -huh, to remember what you say. But this course has been arranged that way for you. So you should take advantage of it. No one sit and then come and wait and come and hear it from someone. You will delay. And without a pass, a good pass in this course, you can't graduate. That's the part that worries us. Okay, so let's work that way. We've had our first in-person interactive session for our unit one. We've had a fair idea of what the whole course is about. We have done our unit two on definitions. The rest of the work for you to engage, go to my YouTube channel. All the topics I've been doing are already there. You can do it. Madam, you can do it. Then you bring your questions to the online session, and then we are good. Okay. What did we do today? We saw in two minutes quickly. We saw the types of definitions, the parts of the definition, what the definition connotes, and based on the connotation, what it denotes. Then we, we use that to show how we can detect equivocation and correct it. Then we saw some examples of equivocation. Everything I'm saying comes along on your screen. Then we looked at types of definitions, how they overlap. That led us to the open textured natures, nature of definitions, and how some concepts are well defined. Then we finally ended with what? A diagnosis of problems with definition and even tried our hands on some of them. We'll look at types of discourse when we meet next. Look out for notices on Sakai. I haven't authorized any WhatsApp platform because I can't vouch for what is put there. But if you trust your course site, then you can have all the links to all tutorial sessions that are sanctioned, not what someone else is doing somewhere. That you come and tell me that someone took money from you, for example. And I can't answer for that as a coordinator of the course or even as a lecturer of the course. Okay, that's one. Then two, all the lecture links for interaction like this one. After you've had the lecture, you studied the textbook, you've gone through the course outline, you have questions or you want clarity on something so you want to meet a lecturer of the course you are blessed you have about six lectures apart from the one that is assigned to the group so i put all the links there so you can just join that link and the time for it and you don't have any restrictions then we will do the same for our tutorial sessions for all the six eight TAs we have currently so every day there is someone you can contact then already i said you have their recorded lectures interactive sessions in the past that are all uploaded on our various channels, accessible to you freely. You cannot fail in this course. The exams are standardized. Everybody in all the groups will go and sit online, on site, on campus here, use the university computers to do your interim assessment, 30%, and also the final exam, 50%. The only thing we do off site will be the first 20%. All of what I've said is already on the course outline. And the various announcements on the course site. Thank you very much. I have to enter another session. All the best. Mom, how, how, much, how much? Thank you. And take care. Thank you. Read announcements. I'm trying not to get angry. Thank you, madam. Do I look like a a, a business woman? <laughs> take care, my class. Thank, thank you, Nana you. and Princess. Thank you all. Keep learning. Oh, I wish you perfect age. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Take care. Madam, I have a thank question. You. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.